Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following that breaking news. A tentative agreement has been reached in the Hollywood writer's strike. We're going to tell you what it means for the actors still on the picket line and also the latest on the auto workers strike as well. And an ABC News exclusive with the man at the center of the violent brawl at an Alabama riverfront last month. He is telling his story for the first time. You'll see it all right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, good morning, San Antonio. Today, a record summer heat has put a strain on AC units. How one local business is struggling to survive after losing its AC system. What you can do to avoid that scenario. Plus, we got an interview with John Stamos and Mike Love. who are coming to San Antonio tonight to play the biggest Beach Boy hits at the Majestic Theater downtown. And up next, volunteers with the American Cancer Society fighting on Capitol Hill for more funding for research and cancer treatment, what they're asking for and how it affects you. And this is uh, one of the incidents that Stephen is keeping an eye on this morning, 281 at the San Antonio River. We have some wet roads out there. Be careful. Right now, GMSA, the man you see here back in the Bear County Jail after an escape this weekend, how he got out and how he was caught. Plus, the nation hurtling towards a crisis. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Republicans so far have not reached a deal to avoid a government shutdown this weekend. Details coming up. And let's look out there with live cam. Happy Monday, everybody. We're waking up to 79 degrees. Not too bad after that very hot weekend we had, but we're going to be checking in with Justin to see what kind of surprises we can expect today. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Monday, September 25th. That's right. Rise and shine. And some people in our viewing area got some rain. Um, we didn't, but, um, you know, closer to downtown. But eh, the chances are still roaming around. Well, and remember, we came into work a couple hours ago, and the light show was fantastic off to the west of San Antonio. Where are the storms now, Justin? Well, we still have st some storms on the radar, but they're, they're up towards Junction. So if you're watching us from Kerrville and Bandera, it was kind of a rough night. You had some loud storms coming through. Those storms have since kind of calmed down. Uh, here in San Antonio, we haven't seen much at all. I, we picked up a hundredth of an inch of rain at the airport. How's that? We got 101 yesterday and just a hundredth of an inch of rain overnight into this morning. Doesn't seem fair, but here's what I'll tell you. We do have a chance for a few more storms this afternoon. So not all hope is lost here. As we look a little bit closer, uh, it does look like we have a bit of an outflow boundary right here, so that may kick up some storms. We're seeing a few showers around Bernie, and then some more showers working in the Bandera place. It's already seen some heavy rain a little bit earlier this morning. We'll see what this does as it moves into Bear County. We've also got one little lone shower here on the northwest side near Helotus, and then a patch of light rain came through the east side of the county. That has since died down, and then we've still got more storms forming up near Junction where this has been very consistent. I mean, we've just seen storm after storm up here. And in fact, let me show you the estimated rainfall totals over the last 24 hours, and you can see exactly where the rain has fallen. Uh, just some huge numbers up there near Junction. I was just checking in. They've got over two inches of rain already. West of Fredericksburg, some storms there last night, picked up some good rain, but you look at Bear County, almost nothing, unless you're just on the far northwest side. Uh, there was some rain, uh, but Kerrville, Bernie, Bandera, down towards Medina Lake. Yes, you did get some rain overnight. Here's our forecast today. As I mentioned, not all hope is lost here because uh, we still have a chance of rain through the morning time, just small chance. But by the afternoon, we bring that up to a 40% chance. We'll still get up into the 90s, but not as hot as yesterday. Beyond that, even a little cooler, a little drier too. So the forecast looks pretty good. We're going to talk more about those afternoon storms and when and where they may pop up coming up here in just a few minutes. But we'll toss it over to Stephen now. Things got busy in the last day. Yes, and while we have seen some progress, we still have issues like this right behind me, Justin. 281 right here at SA River. As we take that shot in, you can still see we have those two vehicles out there. And you may see it off in the distance, those uh, flashing lights uh, where we see the emergency lights from one of those vehicles that may have been involved in this crash. We know at least three lanes are now blocked along 281 heading northbound, and we have multiple first responders out there. Be on the lookout. This is going to impact your commute if you are heading northbound. Be careful for those first responders and let's hope everyone's doing okay. But we see that the slight buildup is right there and right around that curve that you see at northbound uh, 281 near Josephine. It is the big issue right now on the roadway. Some of the other problems have cleared out. But another issue that still persists is right down over here. Loop 410. This is heading eastbound at Morrison Boulevard. This appears to be on the frontage road, so it's not really causing any issues with traffic. But first responders are out there, so let's be on the lookout for them. 
as we take a drive back here into town. This was considered a pretty big crash along I-10 westbound at Gulebita Road. This was the upper level, and by the looks of it from the transcat cameras, it may have cleared out. I'm not seeing any other reports from TxDOT, so that's the good news. But we still have a delay that's being picked up in the westbound lanes of I-10, so watch out there. Now, another issue that was considered a pretty serious crash was right here along Loop 410 eastbound near Vance Jackson Road. This also appears to have cleared from the TxDOT uh, reports, and I'm just seeing a buildup still that remains. So watch out if you have to head in that direction. It has been a pretty busy morning out on the roadways. Just remember to slow down before you approach any curves. We'll watch the roads closely and hopefully have a better update in this particular scene a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. A Bear County man is back behind bars after deputies say he escaped from the Bear County Jail. Jail officials noticed 39-year-old Alexander Nero was missing after conducting a headcount this past weekend. Deputies looked at jail footage and determined he joined a group of people leaving the jail, and that's how he got out. He was arrested hours later at a home in the 10,000 block of Wild Rose Bay over in West Bear County. Nero was originally in jail on a misdemeanor theft charge and now faces the add-on charge of felony escape. And $5 million was awarded to UT Health San Antonio this weekend so they can expand treatment and education surrounding what's called long COVID. Now, experts say many people may not recognize the symptoms, so UT Health San Antonio is working to expand care to South Texas, especially in underserved communities. Dr. Monica Verutsko Gutierrez says these communities may not know about the symptoms and it can be difficult to access the right kind of care. A lot of times they have to work or it's hard for them to get out of work to be able to get to a physician. So then already not getting physician care and then realizing that something's going on or having to take off time work. Now she says that the symptoms of long COVID include lingering fatigue, shortness of breath and migraines. And over the next five years, the money will also be used to teach doctors how to better detect and treat long COVID. Top of your morning headlines, you're looking live at the White House in Washington, where it's now 7.05 in the morning. In D.C., there are growing fears of a potential government shutdown. Just up Pennsylvania Avenue, lawmakers on Capitol Hill have until this weekend to reach a deal that would keep federal agencies funded, along with millions of Americans. That includes our military members who could see a pause on their paychecks. As ABC's Faith Bube explains, infighting among House Republicans has created a bit of a stalemate. This morning, a potential crisis on the horizon as the nation moves uncomfortably close to a potential government shutdown. House Republicans in disarray, so far unable to reach a deal to fund the federal government while the clock ticks towards a September 30th deadline. The country is headed for a shutdown and everyone should prepare as such. Republican hardliners like Florida Representative Matt Gates calling for deep spending cuts and stricter border policies. They also want to cut funding for the war in Ukraine both of which are a non-starter for President Biden, congressional Democrats, and even some Senate Republicans. But even as a devastating shutdown appears imminent, some House Republicans rejecting Speaker Kevin McCarthy's pitch for a short-term funding bill, called a continuing resolution which would temporarily keep the lights on. Is that something that you would support? No, ma'am. A government shutdown this weekend would be one of the largest shutdowns in U.S. history. The White House says it would force millions of government workers, including military troops and law enforcement agents, to work without pay. Funding for disaster relief would be in jeopardy, and 10,000 children would lose access to Head Start. Funding the government is one of those basic responsibilities of Congress. And it's time for the Republicans to start doing the job America elected them to do. I just believe if you're not funding the troops and you're not funding the border, it's pretty difficult to think that you're going to win in a shutdown. And even though it's Republican infighting that's holding up a deal to avert a shutdown, a new ABC News Washington Post poll shows Americans would blame Democrats and President Biden for the crisis. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And over in Hollywood, after five months, a deal to potentially end the writer's strike has been reached. However, your favorite shows won't be returning just yet. The Writers Guild has reached a tentative agreement with studios to end the historic strike that paralyzed Hollywood and shut down production since May. The three-year contract still needs to be legally finalized before a vote writers by Writers Guild leadership. And once approved, the contract will be sent to union members for a ratification vote. I know they would not uh, have uh, told us a tentative deal was reached and told us that picketing is suspended if it wasn't exemplary. 
Once the deal is approved, late night and daytime talk shows will return within days. However, it will still take weeks to write scripts for narrative shows and even longer for those shows to enter production. After escalating its strike last Friday, United Auto Workers Union still has plenty of leverage in its effort to force auto companies to agree to significant increases in pay and benefits. A little more than 10% of the union's membership is now taking part in the strike right now. So UAW could really ramp up that number if they choose to. And General Motors and Stellantis plants. The union has stopped upping strike efforts at Ford plants after the company agreed to some terms that the union requested. And looking ahead, Usher will headline the Super Bowl 58 halftime show in February. Usher said, it's an honor of a lifetime, adding, quote, I can't wait to bring the world a show unlike anything else they've seen from me before, end quote. So it's unclear what other artists Usher might invite to perform with him. Super Bowl 58 will take place on February 11th at the Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Yeah, and the Raiders are struggling this year, so that may be the best game we see in Las Vegas all year in this year's Super Bowl. It'll be a, a boost for them over there. Next year's Super Bowl. Yeah. 609, 79 degrees. And still to come, the NFL and Amazon are using AI to create a new stat for football. We're going to explain how and why the league is hoping new data can help teams succeed. And after the break, volunteers with the American Cancer Society are fighting on Capitol Hill for more funding for cancer research and treatment, what they're asking for and how it affects you. Looking out there with live cam, no rain in this shot. This is like in San Antonio, but in our viewing area, there was some rain overnight. I'm hoping for some cloud cover at least this afternoon. We're going to be checking in with Justin for all of that coming up. Welcome back. Just about 614. Right now, there's a push in our nation's capital to raise the funding for cancer research and treatment. Case at 12 producer Haley Powers explains what the American Cancer Society is doing to get that funding approved. All of us have been affected by cancer in one way or another. Jamie Eastloss is just one of 700 volunteers with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, who went to Washington, D.C. to fight for more funding for cancer research and treatment. They say in Texas alone, they expect 139,000 people to learn they have cancer this year, and 44,000 will lose their life to it. The leading cancer type in Texas is breast, uh, followed by prostate, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and then melanoma. They are advocating for $51 billion for cancer research and treatment next year. Here's a breakdown of where they hope the money would go. Nearly $10 billion to the National Cancer Institute, $1.5 billion for advanced research, over $472 million to the CDC cancer and prevention programs, and the rest for early detection programs. Advocating for, for screening, research, uh, better treatment for Americans, that's um, you know, part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm here in, in D.C. The volunteers met with senators and representatives in Washington, D.C. last week to advocate for the funding. The new fiscal year begins October 1st, which means Congress must approve the budget spending by the end of this week. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Time check, 615. Let's check with Stephen Cavazos. So you remember that vehicle fire I mentioned? This is the shot from 410 at Morrison. As we get a wider look at Transguide, you can see that they're off in the distance. Uh, I did talk to our friends over there at Transguide earlier this morning, and we had a number of issues that were, were uh, basically seemed like they were all reported at once. But uh, this one is actually out over on the south side. You can't really get a good shot of it, but uh, first responders are out there from uh, following this vehicle fire. Hopefully we're seeing some progress, but the good news is we're not seeing any slowdowns in the eastbound lanes of Loop 410 as you approach Morrison. So we'll keep a close eye on that. But as I mentioned, there were a number of issues that were reported earlier. One of the current issues here that we have still listed is 281 northbound right there at Josephine Street. We do have a crash and I still see first responders out there. At least three of those lanes remain blocked. And of course, there's a little bit of a buildup taking place. As I gave you a wide view of the map, it looks like some of the other issues we saw have already wrapped up, so that's the good news. But just be careful out there as the commute does get moving. I do want to get it back here to this shot that we have at 410, I'm pardon me, 281, where that major crash is reported again. It's right there around that curve. Uh, curve, pardon me, it does look like we're seeing some progress. It's tough to say. It's still very dark out there. But what we noticed in some of the Transguide cameras earlier was that some of the roads appear to be a little slick, had that sheen. So not clear if that led to any incidents that we saw earlier earlier, but just as always be safe out there. And it's always big news these days when we have showers and storms on radar. So we've actually got it popped up behind mm -hmm. us here yes. on the Octomon. Yep. And it looks like Justin between maybe Highway 90 and I-10, we've got this little corridor yeah. of a few showers and storms. That's where it's been most of the night.
night. Yeah. Uh, that's where a lot of the heavy rain has been, not necessarily here in San Antonio, but uh, off to our north and west. I will tell you, if you're heading off to work and school right now, go ahead and grab the umbrella because there are some light showers trying to work in San Antonio. It still could be a little bit wet for some of us. So let's get right to the radar. Big picture here. Actually, I'm going to start with a picture very quickly. I want to show you this. There was some damage overnight. Uh, now, this says San Antonio. I don't think this was taken in San Antonio. My gut tells me this is probably somewhere in the Hill Country. We'll try to get more information for you. Uh, but this is a, uh, someone who sent this in via KSAC Connect, and this is a big old tree that came down, likely with some gusty winds. Uh, so we know there were some strong to severe storms overnight. Most of the severe weather has calmed down a little bit. Uh, but as we show you the radar, there is still some active weather off to the north and west. And let me switch this back to radar. We had it on rainfall mode uh, to show you the rainfall, the estimated rainfall a little bit earlier. Uh, but let's zoom out. There are still some severe storms. In fact, part of our viewing area is included in a new severe thunderstorm warning uh, that's up across northern parts of Edwards County. So let's zoom in on this storm here. And uh, you can see the warning there. Uh, that's going to go until 7.15 this morning uh, for this storm that is tracking generally off to the south and southeast. You can see kind of the development here. It started up there around Junction where we've seen most of these storms begin and uh, now tracking down into parts of northern Edwards County. Uh, we'll take that off and uh, let's look at some of the threats associated uh, with uh, this particular storm. Uh, I'll switch it over to threats here and uh, it's right there in the western part of it where I think we may see a little bit of hail. Small hail, maybe, maybe up to quarter size. Uh, some gusty winds there as well, uh, but that's showing uh, about half inch size hail. So it's, uh, it's could be sizable. The good news here is that this is mainly over rural areas as it stands right now north of Rock Springs. Uh, it could work in your direction or at least miss you just to the east. Uh, with the latest track, the latest uh, movement with this storm as it moves off to the south and east, probably at about 25 miles per hour or so. We'll keep an eye on that. It does look to be strengthening just a little bit. We mentioned Junction has had a lot of heavy rain and still seeing some storms in western parts of Kerr County and some new development once again uh, with some showers here around Bandera. You had some good heavy rain, some lightning strikes, and uh, we can turn on the lightning strikes, by the way. So we are seeing a few at that cell and then some light rain working into San Antonio. So if you're on the northwest side, you're seeing some light rain around around Leon Springs, and then this may make its way down towards 1604 I-10 area uh, with a few more light showers uh, around. So that's kind of the uh, radar tour there. Uh, here's what we're thinking forecast wise. Now this is gonna be tricky because with these storms this morning, we've got a lot of what we call blow off clouds in the upper parts of the atmosphere that could prevent any more storm development this afternoon if they stick around. OK, so we're going to have to watch that plus the outflow boundaries. But the computer models pretty consistent on still wanting to develop a few storms this afternoon. Uh, San Antonio and then along I-10 really could be anywhere. OK, because uh, again, it depends on where those outflow, outflow boundaries sit. And we also have a frontal boundary to mix in there, a weak one, but it's there. Uh, and so we're going to keep in a 40 percent chance of rain. But just know it's not going to be everybody that gets rain. And so far, San Antonio has generally missed out. Uh, so let's hope that's not the case this afternoon. There is that weak frontal boundary, so it's around. It's just part of uh, the many factors that could lead into uh, that chance of storms later today. There is a severe weather risk, gusty winds, hail, the main issues if we see any severe weather. So our forecast today, 20% chance of rain this morning. We up that to a 40% chance this afternoon. Still pretty toasty, but not as hot as yesterday. We're thinking highs right around 96. So you see there, late afternoon, evening hours is kind of our next window, if you will, for rain. 20% chance tomorrow, 10% Wednesday. Temperatures do come down a bit. We get some slightly drier air by the end of the work week. Uh, but that's the latest with what's going on this morning. Thankful at least to see some rain on the radar. It's just not here in town. And again, to reemphasize, there is still a shot at a shower storm throughout the day. Yes, uh, especially I'd say after after the lunch hour. OK, yep. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 621, 79 degrees. And just ahead, a man who was at the center of a violent brawl at an Alabama boat dock is speaking out for the first time. That's next in your GMA First Look. Don't mind me. I'm just the flu. I'm quite harmless, really. And when people ask, but aren't you linked to dangerous flu complications like pneumonia, heart attack, and hospitalizations? I just say, but I'm just the flu. It's him. Who? 
I'm just the flu. Fight the flu with higher dose flu vaccines from Sanofi. They're proven to provide better flu protection than standard dose flu shots in older adults. They've even been shown to better protect against flu-related complications. Don't get flu zone high dose quadrivalent if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components, including egg products, or after previous dose of flu vaccine. Don't get flu block quadrivalent if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components. Tell your healthcare professional if you've had severe muscle weakness after a flu shot. People with weakened immune systems may have a lower vaccine response. Demand more from your flu shot. To get a Sanofi vaccine, make sure to ask for it by name. Schedule your Sanofi flu shot. Available at these preferred national pharmacies. In this morning's GMA First Look, Damian Pickett, who was at the center of that violent and viral Alabama boat dock brawl, speaking for the first time. I didn't expect this to happen at work today. I was expecting another peaceful, nice cruise. Four of the boaters involved in the violence aimed at Pickett, pleading not guilty to misdemeanor assault charges. When asked about the incident, the defendants telling ABC News they had no comment, but Pickett telling Robin Roberts about the altercation. What's going through your mind at that time? The people of the boat, their safety, getting them in, getting everybody off and getting them home. Plus I'm thinking about his boat also, because if our boat hits his boat, it's going to sink. And coming up at 7 a.m., more of Robin's interview with Pickett and the friends who jumped in to help him. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, the Wall Street Journal reports Meta is set to announce new AI chatbots designed to have conversations with users on its platforms, including Facebook and Instagram. The report says Meta's chatbots will be geared to younger users. The dating app Tinder is set to roll out a new and very exclusive subscription. The elite tier is called Tinder Select, offered to just 1% of its VIPs. Now, the chosen few will have access to features like exclusive messaging services. The cost? $6,000 a year. Yikes. And the NFL and Amazon using AI to create new football stats. The next-gen stats will break down individual players' movements when they're on the field. Among the measurements, a defender's aggressiveness and a quarterback's response time, or lack thereof. Oops. <laughs> time now, 626 and 79 degrees for now. Let's check on TransSky. This is an incident that Steve has been tracking for a while. 281 here, headed into downtown at the San Antonio River. We'll get an update coming up right here on GMSA. And again, uh, uh, Justin is tracking some storms that have dumped quite a bit of rain in some hill country spots. We'll be right back. This morning on GMSA, the record summer heat put a strain on our AC units. How one local business is struggling to survive after losing its AC and what you can do, it, uh, do to avoid a similar fate. Plus, we just walked off stage and he, John was drumming and I was singing. He was singing, he was great. And, and so uh, we had a great crowd. We got a fun, fun, fun interview with John Stamos and Mike Love who are coming to San Antonio tonight to play the biggest Beach Boy hits at the Majestic. And outside with live cam this morning, we had quite the light show this morning with showers and thunderstorms moving near San Antonio, but rain here in the Alamo City has been hard to find even in the overnight hours. Good morning. It is Monday. It is September 25th, and we hope you had a wonderful weekend. No doubt about it. It was a scorcher yesterday, record heat, but today starting out 79 degrees, and we are hoping the clouds will help us out a little bit today, Justin. Yeah, it's it's going to be tricky, but I, I think we do have an opportunity for some more storms this afternoon. It just it hasn't happened overnight into this morning. All the rain has been in the hill country, and it's been really consistent. We continue to see storm after storm up here. So this is where all the heavy rain is, and by the time it gets to San Antonio, generally just falling apart. Had a batch of showers just trying to move in on the northwest side of San Antonio and look at that falling apart. Uh, we've got some light rain there around uh, I-10 and 1604, but it's it's not much. Nothing more than a few sprinkles. We've got a few showers around Bandera. Those are falling apart. There is a boundary. It looks like right there. So we'll see what that does here in the next uh, several hours. But the main focus at the moment is a severe thunderstorm warning, which is in northern Edwards County. This is moving south and a pretty good looking storm here. So we'll pause it and uh, zoom in a little bit closer. If you're watching us from Rock Springs, this may clip you. Uh, we have quite a bit of lightning strikes at the moment. It's over rural areas. It's along uh, Highway 377 here and we can switch it over and put on the threats. And the way you see some of that purple color, uh, that's where we could see some hail 
up to golf ball size hail, although this shows half inch hail, so not as large. Looks like the storm's kind of diminishing a little bit. That's good news. That's good news. But we'll switch it back to radar here and uh, zoom out one more time. And uh, we'll put a track on this as uh, this storm, again, uh, moving off to the south and east at about, uh, I'd say, 25 miles per hour. So we'll see if it clips Rock Springs. And there's not many cities in the path of this because this is a pretty rural area. But it shows Hackberry at about 709. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that. Again, here in San Antonio, it's just been really, really light stuff. We picked up a hundredth of an inch at the airport. So what can we expect this afternoon? Uh, if you are headed off to work right now, go ahead and grab the umbrella just in case we see a couple showers this morning. And I think there is an opportunity to see some storms this afternoon. Right now, about a 40% chance. It'll be scattered, and we do need to watch for the risk for a couple strong storms mixed in there, too. High temperatures today, 95, 96, so not as bad as yesterday. And we'll see some slightly better weather uh, the rest of this work week. That 7 day forecast is coming up in just a couple minutes. We toss it over to Steven now. Uh, is it still busy out there? Uh, it's uh, winding down just a bit, Justin, as we get a look there at 281 there at SA River. We take that shot in and you can see that we still have first responders out there. Uh, looks like there is also a little bit of a holdup, but traffic is moving through the area a little bit better than what we saw earlier. This is in the northbound lanes, and remember, it was the site of a major crash that was reported earlier in the morning. Uh, earlier, there was also about three lanes that were blocked. Now it just looks like we have two lanes that are blocked, so that is some progress. But let's hope everyone's doing okay out there because first responders have been working the scene for quite a while, but there were a number of issues that were reported. This was just one of those that we were keeping track of, and there is some slight improvement on the slowdown, so it looks like we're getting a little bit more green in the northbound lanes as drivers approach Josephine Street. But always remember, anytime you see a curb up ahead of you, if you're driving, slow down before you approach it. That's pretty helpful. I'm still seeing this fire listed by uh, by text out of vehicle fire at 410 eastbound at Morrison Boulevard. It's not really caused any issues with traffic because it does appear it may be on the frontage road, but still be on the lookout there and just anytime you see those flashing lights, you got to move over or slow down. Giving you a wide view of the map, uh, we're going to start to see some of the congestion build in and it's always going to be in the usual spot, US 90 before 1604. That's usually the first place we'll start to spot that slowdown as well as 35 southbound if you are heading in from Live Oak. So just make sure to plan accordingly. As Justin said, make sure to bring that umbrella with you this morning and make sure those windshield wipers are working uh, just wherever you go because you want to make sure you get to your destination on time and safely. We'll watch this scene and let's hope we'll have that good update uh, before the show wraps up tonight. Guys. Thank you, sir. After a summer of record heat, have you checked your AC unit? One service company says they had double the number of customers calling for help. Our Avery Everett shows us how one business is struggling to survive after losing its AC unit and what technicians say you can do to keep it from happening to you. From one cup of coffee to the next, Vincent Guerrero is working overtime to keep his lights on. Yes, absolutely. In a summer when business should have been heating up. I love jazz, but I love hip hop. Vice versa coffee and vinyl records had to shut down. It's 23 years old and um, like I said, they didn't replace the entire unit. The AC went out. It was rough, it was crazy. And it took weeks to get all the parts working again. It just happened at the worst possible time. And one repair technician says this unit wasn't the only one left waiting. We're just starting to catch up with some of our customers uh, after July. Christopher Moore says his customer count shot up this summer. Running double what we would normally run in a single day. Now he's breaking through some of the backlog and shipping has picked back up. Uh, we have a couple days turnaround to uh, get it in. Guerrero hopes his shot for this storefront isn't over yet. I guess my own little passion project. Doing all he can. Everything I got, take it, I don't care. As long as this is, you know, open. To keep his shop alive. I don't want to be in a position where, you know, trying to wait too long or something. I'm impressed. Vice versa is back open now that its AC unit is working. That technician says you should look to get a tune up if you're worried about your own unit ahead of the winter. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And concerns over the crisis at the border are intensifying as migrants surge across from Mexico. Authorities in El Paso say their migrant facilities are near capacity and the city council is working to make as much room for them as they can. ABC News reports nearly 9,000 migrants were apprehended at the border in a single day, the highest number since May. Officials in El Paso opened up more shelter space, but the city says they'll need to send migrants elsewhere to ease the strain. Numbers have really started to increase. The facilities did not hold those type of numbers. 
Governor Greg Abbott announced Friday he's sending buses to El Paso and Eagle Pass to take migrants to major cities across the U.S. At least five buses carrying migrants left the city and are now headed to New York, Chicago and Denver. Well, after a three year pause, student loan payments will officially resume October 1st. But one expert at Wells Fargo Bank says you still have time to get organized. You can make a detailed list of your loans, including loan provider balance and interest rate. And distinguish whether it's a private loan or publicly funded through the federal government. And most importantly, look at your budget. If you have a little bit of extra, you might even want to throw a little bit of extra dollars every single month towards that student loan payment that has the highest interest rate. Yeah, so as she said, tackling loans with the largest interest rates first can mean paying less money in the long run. But at the very least, she says, make those minimum payments. Before we go to break, two legends in their own right are even better when paired together. We're talking about musician John Stamos and Beach Boys frontman Mike Love. Last night, our Courtney Friedman got to speak with them minutes after getting off their stage at the show in Lubbock. And they told her how excited they are to be arriving in San Antonio later today. We just walked off stage and he, John was drumming and I was singing. He was singing, he was great. And, and so uh, we had a great crowd. Just minutes after John Stamos and Mike Loved finished a Beach Boys show in Lubbock, they jumped on the phone with me. How has it been? How has it been playing together? It's uh, I love it. It's, it's fun, fun, fun. It's fun, 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 fun. I have to tell you, this man, I, I hate to say his age, 82 years old. He Thanks. buries the rest of us on that stage. He no. gets back and forth, jokes and compliments between old friends, talking about all their recent shows. These young, these other acts all came around. They wanted to meet Mike Love. They gave really nice respect, and the crowd were crazy. So yeah, I mean, but they thing. like they want to do selfies with John Stamos. I don't yeah, blame. Really. I don't blame any of them. But it's been a long partnership. John Stamos played his first show with the Beach Boys back in the '80s. Well, he was Blackie on General Hospital when we first met him. And the girls were all crazy for him, so I, we got him on stage with yeah. us. Turned out, he had the chops. Stamos started playing drums at four years old. I'm, I was and I still am the biggest Beach Boy fan on the planet, and I'm so grateful every moment I get to play with him. Yeah. What, is your, what are each of your favorite songs to play together? Well, my favorite is uh, Kokomo, Good Vibrations, I Get Around, Fun, 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 Surfing USA, California Girls, Help Me, Rhonda Barbara. Yeah, all the songs Just, wrote. Just a few. Well, Songs that stay on the test of time because we can still feel them. Optimism, happiness, fun, 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 good vibrations. Which is what we're going to deliver to the majestic. Oh, I love that theater. Yeah, it's a beautiful I theater. I played there a couple We love the playing there. What do you remember most about San Antonio? There's the greatest Mexican restaurants in the oh, world yeah, there. Mexican. Doesn't matter how long they've been in the spotlight, the excitement of travel, music, and new memories clearly has not faded. Yeah, if you would have told me that I was going to be on stage in San Antonio, Texas, and With Mike Love and the Beach Boys, I would never believe. And, and he mentions me by name. Oh, and that's what it's about. The love of music and good friends to play it with. As you can see, Courtney, Courtney had no fun at all talking to those guys. <laughs> oh, their show tonight is at the Majestic Theater downtown at 7.30 p.m. So if you want to see the full fun interview, you can find the story on KZ.com and scroll to the bottom. And our uh, early show producer uh, checked, and there are still tickets available to the Beach Boys show tonight. It's nice that they're coming here to San Antonio. Time now, 640 and 79 degrees for now. Here's Sarah Costa with what's coming up next on GMSA. So last year, monarchs were put on the endangered species list by federal scientists. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up, we're going to explain some new research that suggests monarchs are actually doing okay. 644, what a happy coincidence. We have a monarch right there in our little animation. The migrating monarch butterfly population that heads south to Mexico and stops in San Antonio every fall was put on the endangered species list by federal scientists last year. However, a new study suggests the monarch population as a whole is doing well. Sarah Costa explains this new study and what it means for the beloved monarch. Last year, federal scientists listed the migrating monarch that flies through South Texas on their way to Mexico over the winter as endangered, claiming that 90% of the population has declined in the last 20 years. But a new study pushes against that narrative and suggests the monarch population is actually doing okay. Going against the belief of federal scientists that say monarchs are endangered is definitely going to cause some controversy in the science world. Biologists with the College of William & Mary examined 25,000 years of data and DNA from monarchs and milkweeds. They believe the monarch population size is bigger now than it was before humans modified the landscape of North America 200 years ago. 
The study suggests there is not a recent decline of monarch or milkweed size. The scientists did point out that the monarch population might not be in decline, but perhaps their migration to Mexico is at risk. Their numbers don't reflect the declining population that overwinters in Mexico. One thing that the researchers from this new study and the federal scientists do agree on, both stress the importance that we should continue planting native pollinator habitats, not just for our monarchs, but all insects to have balanced and healthy ecosystems. Happy planting. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 6.45. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Better news over here, guys. 281 at SA River, the crash that we've been monitoring for the last hour looks like it's cleared out. But as we take that shot in, we may have some congestion still through the area. There was a little bit of a holdup for some of the folks out there. So be on the lookout. If you see any of those slowdowns, that is really what's going to be expected. But as we see more people out there, new problems are popping up. Right behind me, 410 westbound at I-35 over on the southwest side. We do have a new crash reported. This is not causing issues just yet, but I have to keep an eye on it. I do see flashing lights out there from one of the TransGuide images. I'll see if our friends over there can put that on our wall for us, but we'll watch it closely. This vehicle fire is still listed by TechStop, but I'm not seeing any flashing lights out there anymore, so that's the good news. So let's hope that's cleared out. And the same story goes for over here at 281 heading northbound at Josephine. As we just saw from that TransGuide camera, things have already cleared out over there. But traffic's definitely picking up. We had our few incidents reported this morning. As we give you a wider look at the map, it's going to be congestion that we're going to have to bear it uh, through. But other than that, guys, just uh, make sure to drive safe. It was a little bit of a rocky start to our Monday morning. But again, as we get a look around town, let's just drive safe and get to our destinations on time. But as I always say, safely. Thank you, Stephen. Our head for the Cure 5K run walk was Saturday, and KSAT showed up big time. Yeah, a lot of hey. us were out here. There's uh, Justin and I. I'm trying to. Stand on my tippy toes and <laughs> be somewhat taller. Katrina was in that one. Yes, There's Steve Spreester. Yeah. Hey, Justin's photobombing. And then guy. Mike. Just a little bit. <laughs> Mike was out there greeting <laughs> everybody. But there was a there was a good crowd. Uh, a lot of people, of course, you know, we have you know Team Boyle who's running in honor of our late news director Jim Boyle. But a lot of teams out there for uh, for their loved ones who are currently battling and who have passed away from brain cancer. So right. it's a nice turnout. Final results. We had several runners. Stephanie Serna came in first place for her age group. Oh, thank you. Justin Warren <laughs> came in third place in his group. Yeah. Well Good done, job. guys. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Still sore. Oh. Yeah, I bet. Drink some water. It's always <laughs> nice to bring home some hardware, Steph. Yeah, the, yeah. This is a so this is a regular uh, when you cross the finish line for head yeah. for the cure, and then right. when, you know when you play. You get you get another medal. Nice. Like my uh, my little girl uh, went in her age group uh, from from one well, one to nine years old, like and so she was well, well she was excited. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a good weekend. It was. It was, it was, was. fun. It, it really was a great cause. A little humid though. It was a little it, sticky. It was uh, for the run. I will tell you that was hot. Uh, yesterday was ridiculous. Uh, we got up to 101. So these storms that we're seeing this morning. Uh, they're providing a little bit of relief for some of us, not necessarily here in San Antonio because we're at 79. Yes, the airport is reporting a little bit of light rain, but really that was at the uh, the top of the hour and it was light. We only picked up a hundredth of an inch of rain at the airport. So San Antonio has not been so lucky when it comes to rain overnight. And uh, last night where there was a lot of storms, we had them really develop across the hill country into the north and west, and they're still there. We still have that severe thunderstorm warning that's now trying to work its way through Edwards County into Real County. And let's take a little closer look here. This has kind of picked up speed a little bit where you see these purple colors. That's where we could have some sizable hail up to quarter size hail, wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So let's take a little closer look at the storm. We're going to pause it and uh, zoom in some. It's still over mainly rural areas in between Highway 377 and Highway 41 there that uh, moves into parts of Real County. But this is starting to work its way into the county. It has uh, picked up speed a little bit too. So let's retract this. It's kind of merging with this other storm you see here and it's uh, moving southwest at a really a pretty good clip. I'd say uh, 35 miles per hour. So we'll put it at uh, 37. It's jumping on me there, but uh, let's see, 37, 36. There we go. Lost Maples, about 708. Uh, tough. Uh, that would be 712, uh, just to the west of Bandera, probably right around 715 or so. So this, again, staying over main, mainly over rural areas. We will need to watch Lakey though. Uh, that would be around 7 o'clock or so if that storm does make it there. Again, hail gusty winds are going to be the main threats here. So let's put this back into motion and uh, zoom back out. We'll take the track off. 
And uh, you can see that's pretty much the, the main action that we have out there right now. We had a few light showers move through San Antonio. Junction still seeing some rain and some lightning strikes here. The, the rain has been very consistent. A lot of heavy rain up there. We're talking over two, three inches of rain. We just not have, have not seen that uh, here in town. So what does the forecast look like? The, the models continue to want to have those storms die down. And then as we head into the afternoon, see a few more. But it's all going to depend on the outflow boundaries, kind of where they set up, where our weak frontal boundary sets up. So this is not a guarantee, but we're talking about a 40% chance of some pop-up storms later today with that front around. And there could be a couple strong storms mixed in there. And then that all pushes us out by 10 o'clock. So 40%, I'd say our odds are highest between 3 and 7 o'clock here in San Antonio. And that's what we'll be watching. Uh, right now, one part of this too, is the uh, cloud cover. We have a lot of blow off from these storms off to the north and west. So clouds like this can keep storms from developing as long as they're there. Uh, as long as these are sticking around, it may be a little bit hard. But I, I, I think by the afternoon, again, we will see things become a little bit more conducive for some storms. Isolated strong storms, gusty winds, quarter size hail would be the main threats. Extended forecast. A little cooler tomorrow, 93 on Tuesday, 93 Wednesday, some very small rain chances. So today's kind of our day, and then less humidity by the end of the work week. That would be a treat, less humidity. Still warm, but not as hot as it has been. And we'll take it. Yeah. 651, 78 degrees. Look out there with live cam. Hey, we'll take that 78 degrees, right? After that very hot weekend we had, but uh, we were looking forward to that less humidity at the end of the week. We'll be right back. It's a Monday morning out on the roads. Get a look right behind me. This is 35 at Flores Street. We're going to take that camera in and you can see that we do have multiple first responders out there. Another crash has come into our newsroom and we're seeing a buildup out there as well as folks are making their way into the Alamo City. Not a good area, especially around this time with morning rush. Tow truck on the scene, but it's tough to see if paramedics are out there. I do see multiple police officers, so just be careful because they're working the scene right there around 35 northbound at Flores and you see that buildup already taking shape. Uh, we have to take a jump over here to the west side of town where we do have another crash reported along 151 eastbound at Petrenko Road. So it has been a pretty busy morning out there on the roadways. We have not had a quiet start, unfortunately, but we're going to watch things closely. Justin Stephen, thank you. We'll go back to the radar one more time. The authority radar. We still have a severe thunderstorm warning for northern parts of Edwards County now uh, leaking down to Real County. We'll see if this gets extended into Real County. Uh, no word yet, but we know that warning in Edwards County goes for another 15 minutes or so. A lot of lightning strikes. That's the one storm we're watching. Everything else has kind of died down. Nothing here in San Antonio. And will that make it to San Antonio? Still a question. I uh, don't know that it will, but we have some rain chances this afternoon. 40% chance later today. We'll watch for a couple strong storms during that period as well. So keep the umbrella with you. Know there can be some storms around today, and we'll keep you up to date on the KSAT weather. I brought my umbrella just in case. I don't know if I'm going to help or hurt you as far as rain here in San Antonio. Well, hopefully, hopefully help. Hopefully. <laughs> see you at night.